All right, good afternoon once again. Uh, my name is Dave Nadler. I'm a Warning Coordination Meteorologist here at the National Weather Service in Peachtree City, Atlanta. And we are going, this is our uh, first kind of special briefing on Nicole. Things are starting to certainly come together um, over the next 48 hours. We're going to try to shed some light on what we are anticipating across north and central Georgia. <clears throat> okay, so here's the kind of bullet points, if you will. Uh, again, Nicole, right now, Nicole is a high-end tropical storm. It is expected to reach low-end Category 1 hurricane status, if you will. But it's really going to go up maybe 5, 10 miles per hour at the most before it makes landfall. Right now, I think it's right over, like, the Great Abaco Island of Bahamas, just east of Florida, about 180 miles east of West Palm Beach. Um, so anyway, um, as Nicole moves inland across Florida, it is expected to turn uh, north and then northeast eventually and move across Georgia and parts of the Carolinas late Thursday night into Friday. Um, confidence is fairly high in the track. I think the Hurricane Center has done a really good job over the last couple of days making some adjustments, um, but the models uh, have been fairly consistent, which is a good thing with the system, both in, with respect to the track and also the intensity. Um, Again, we're late season. I mean, we're in November and we're seeing a tropical system. It doesn't happen all the time, but we're still in the season. Combination of gradient winds uh, and approaching Nicole will result in a prolonged period of gusty wind. So this is definitely one of our concerns. Not so much that we're, we're not expecting like 70 mile an hour winds, but if we see 30, 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts at times over the course of like an 18 to 24 hour period, especially as the grounds become saturated with any rainfall that we get, and we are anticipating rain out of this. Um, the concern certainly would be down trees and power lines that could result, you know, due to these prolonged periods of wind. So we did just into, issue a wind advisory for the whole area that starts late tonight and basically runs all the way through Friday afternoon, early evening. And this is our criteria for wind advisory. Is like sustained 20 to 25, but gust over 35 up to about 45 or so. Rainfall, we're expecting one to three inches across the entire area. We could see locally higher amounts, wouldn't surprise me. Um, the risk for localized flash flooding is certainly there um, given the circumstances. I'll get into that here in just a second. Okay, so here's the latest on Nicole. Again, tropical storm, but expected to intensify over the next six to 12 hours a little bit. So it could become a hurricane later today into this evening before making landfall late tonight, somewhere um, on the east coast of Florida. And then you can see the gradual turn to the northwest, north, and then eventually northeast tomorrow, tomorrow night, and into Friday. Um, we are expecting as Nicole makes that turn into like somewhere across Florida and into south Georgia somewhere, that the upper level winds will start to pick it up and accelerate it to the north northeast that's a good thing in the sense that it won't just sit over us and dump like 10 inches of rain or anything like that so that's a, that's certainly a good thing however wind and rain as i mentioned just a second ago are definitely going to be a concern for the entire north and central georgia area beginning late especially late tomorrow tomorrow night and into friday morning um I, there may be some questions especially across far south or far parts of like southern part of our area, middle Georgia into south Georgia on why we're not consider, we, you know, considering any tropical storm watches or warnings. It's because the system is expected to weaken and the threat for any tropical storm, like persistent tropical storm force winds is pretty low that we're, we've decided to go within wind advisory at this point and not any tropical storm related products. And we've coordinated with like Tallahassee, Jacksonville and Charleston and at this point, they're not stretching any of their tropical storm warnings further north and west at this point. So that's a good thing. <clears throat> All right, let's, let me talk briefly about the confidence in the forecast. I've shown this before. I showed it with Ian. Um, but with Nicole, like the, the, when we're looking at different ranges of models or different model outputs, we tend to, we don't focus on one uh, deterministic output we're looking at kind of a range of possibilities and a lot of the different model plumes are re in really good agreement over the next 36 to 48 hours as you can see sort of the general bullseye this is a graphic of where the center of Nicole is expected to be um, late Thursday night into Friday morning and to see that um, spread pretty concentrated across parts of middle and, and southwest Georgia is really good. So the confidence is there. This is one re one reason why the confidence is high. Of course, there's other things that are 
uh, taken into consideration when we're talking about the forecast, but the Hurricane Center has done a really good job. Um, still within the forecast cone, uh, the center can can wobble, you know, west or east. So, um, and certainly impacts can be felt outside of the cone. But generally speaking, just wanted to give you uh, a quick reasoning why the confidence is pretty high with the forecast at this point. Okay, main threat levels or threats and impacts and confidence within our local north and central Georgia area. Um, winds are gonna be definitely a, a concern, a moderate concern, certainly, especially due to the pro prolonged period of stronger winds that we could see. Um, rainfall and localized flooding or flash flooding is also a concern. Tornadoes, um, low threat, but definitely anywhere to the east of the center of Nicole, late Thursday, like Thursday night into early Friday morning is going to be a concern. We'll have to watch for these brief little spin up tornadoes that could develop within the outer rain bands to the east or northeast of the center. So um, it's a little, I have a graphic to kind of show you where to kind of watch and prepare for any tornadoes, um, but we'll certainly be, have a better idea tomorrow into tomorrow evening as the system gets closer to the area. Here's the latest satellite on Nicole. It's about as it's, this was taken about 30 minutes ago, but um, the center is moving right across that northern island of Great Abaco, uh, moving to the kind of the west right now at about 10 miles an hour. It's about 180 miles east of West Palm Beach, Florida. And then you can see the track forecast again from the Hurricane Center there on the, on the right side of the, of the graphic. Here's the latest simulation on radar. This is basically snapshotting from about 12 p.m. tomorrow through 12 p.m. Friday. So you can see this, we don't, we're not expecting any rainfall until you know, during the day tomorrow through the morning into the afternoon. We're gonna start to see some light to moderate rain bands moving in from the, from the south and east um, and kind of overspread the area by late in the day and certainly into the evening hours tomorrow night. Um, this is just one model, so I know we, we try not to get focused on just one, one solution, but it's, it's a pretty good depiction of what we're anticipating uh, as the system approaches from the, from the south um, late tomorrow into tomorrow night. But um, you can see some of the outer rain bands with the heavier, um, more concentrated areas of rainfall. This is where we have to sort of watch, especially east and northeast of the center where there could be some brief spin of tornadoes, enhanced uh, rainfall, and also a stronger wind gust. So if you're sitting at about 20 to 30 mile per hour winds and then one of these heavier rain bands comes through, you might bump up to like 40 or 45 for you know 10 to 15 minutes. And that's definitely something um, that's a concern um, that we'll have to be prepared for uh, as we head through the day, late tomorrow into tomorrow night and early Friday morning. This is the probabilistic chance of seeing tropical storm force winds, which is basically 40 plus mile per hour winds, uh, typically sustained, not gusts. Um, and you can see it's pretty low across the area. Um, this may shift a little bit as the system approaches, but generally with the weakening uh, trend of the system as it makes landfall across Florida and into South Georgia, um, we should see that pro these probabilities not change a whole lot over the next couple of days. Um, so again, parts of middle Georgia, about 10 to 20, maybe up towards a 30% chance of seeing uh, tropical storm, storm force winds out of Nicole. So it's, I don't think this is gonna get much higher um, than what we're kind of seeing right now. So, but for areas definitely from like, you know, south of Columbus, Lumpkin County area, all the way to, you know, Americas, up toward Macon, Louisville, and points south and east, that's where the greatest chance of seeing the strongest winds are definitely gonna occur uh, as we head into the afternoon hours tomorrow through tomorrow night and into Friday morning. So in talking about winds, this is the latest forecast that we have. This is, I broke it into three periods. This is just basically through tonight. So we, we do have some gusty winds out there right now. Winds may pick up a little bit more later this evening and into the overnight hours. We do have that wind advisory that goes into effect for the entire area uh, after midnight tonight. Uh, but generally speaking, shouldn't be any major impacts. May see a couple of smaller uh, trees or branches come down, but we're not expecting any rainfall. Um, generally 10 to 15, 10 to 20, 10 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts through the night tonight. Now tomorrow into tomorrow night, that's when the winds are definitely gonna increase pretty quickly through the day as the gradient tightens up and Nicole approaches from the south. Widespread 25 to 35 mile per hour winds can be expected. Um, areas or pockets of 40 plus mile per hour winds 
Um, I would anticipate that at times, especially across parts of central Georgia and the higher elevations of northeast Georgia. So within the heavier rain bands, we could also see pockets of stronger winds. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, and again, one thing to really drive home with the impacts is that this persistent period of gusty winds plus the saturated grounds Thursday night into Friday will definitely elevate the risk of downed trees and power lines um, tomorrow night into Friday morning. And I mentioned the wind advisory um, will be in effect beginning uh, late tonight, basically all the way through the day tomorrow, tomorrow night, and into Friday. Here are the winds into Friday, a little bit lower, although Friday morning could be up just a little bit depending on the exact sort of positioning of, of Nicole and strength, but it is it will weaken. The system is going to weaken itself. So that gradient should relax just a little bit, but still, as we head into Friday morning, anticipate those stronger wind gusts to occur 20 to 30, maybe 30 to 40 plus mile per hour at time, especially in the higher elevations um, and to kind of to the north and east of the center of Nicole. Um, so this is kind of what we're looking at right now uh, for Friday. And then by Friday night into Saturday, things can, should relax enough that we're not considering, we're not expecting any uh, widespread significant impacts from wind. Uh, by that time, Friday night into early Saturday. Rainfall, as I mentioned, widespread one to three inches, the latest forecast. There may be some deviation a little bit, um, you know, over the next 12 hours or so as we sort of fine tune the forecast a little bit. Um, but I think we feel, we feel pretty good of where we're at with this. Um, some of the higher rainfall totals will occur within those more persistent, uh, heavier rain bands. And those are really tough to predict at this point. So, Yes, one to two, one to three across a good portion of the area, but definitely there's going to be some streaks or pockets of, you know, potentially three plus inches um, that occur in the storm total uh, through the night tomorrow night and into the day on Friday um, before Nicole lifts to the northeast away from the area. So definitely an elevated flood or flash flood risk for all areas. And one thing also to keep in mind, time of year with all the leaves coming down from the from the trees. Uh, you know, block drains and, and storm drains and things like that are definitely going to be a, a concern, especially uh, in the more populated areas um, in Metro Atlanta and other areas across the across the region. So something definitely to keep in mind that could exacerbate sort of the flood risk um, across parts of the area as we head into tomorrow night and Friday. So here's the tornado threat. Again, we kind of drew this in it's a little bit different than what SPC has, but I, I kind of went a little bit farther to the west and north with a low risk of where we anticipate um, could see a, a brief tornado or two across the area within those outer rain bands. Um, this is definitely going to be dependent on where the track or the center of Nicole goes. Um, so we may, may fine tune this uh, by tomorrow into tomorrow evening. Uh, but basically this threat is mainly late Thursday uh, Thursday night into Friday morning. So we should be no tornado threat tonight, tomorrow, but as we head to late in the day tomorrow, as some of those outer bands start to approach and the center of the storm approaches and crosses the area, that's when the risk is going to go up just a little bit to see these brief tornadoes. All right, that's uh, that summarizes. This is a summary of, of what we just talked about. I know I repeated myself a lot on some of these things, but um, hopefully, um, Everybody has a pretty good idea of, of what to expect, what to prepare for. Um, we will definitely get some impact in, um, from this system, uh, unlike what we saw with Ian, where Ian just continued to track to the east and, and kind of took everything uh, east with it. Um, Nicole is going to be uh, kind of eyeing its sights on, uh, on us uh, through the day tomorrow, tomorrow night, and into Friday. So um, keep all this in mind. Uh, we are going to do an email uh, update uh, overnight tonight and we will schedule we have scheduled another live special webinar tomorrow um, morning at 1130 so it'll be an hour earlier um, than what we did today um, just to kind of you know as things start to ramp up we want to give people a little bit more time to sort of you know hunker down and be ready for for what's coming in um, so with that